five. So, uh, you guys have basically three hours of my time. We're going to use about an hour and a half of that day. And then you'll have that other hour and a half to book with me whenever you like um, in the next couple of weeks to come back and, and work and go through things that you've been working on, et cetera. I, I like to have a bit of an agenda. I, I you know, know what you want to cover during the session. I haven't gotten really a heads up from Charles or yourself. So I'm just going to jump right in and, and let go. What we like to discuss, review, look at, ask about. Go. <laughs> First of all, we were just looking at, I guess, employing our contacts from Gmail. Okay. Uh, thanks. Gmail, or thanks. Gmail, thanks. Uh, Gmail, thanks. Gmail, thanks. Uh, in the uh, integrated inbox in the confusion box. That was the question we had. Okay. So, um, okay. So, use Gmail, thanks, to bring in your contacts. They, significantly manual process. Um, if you go admin and import data. Well, that's, we're, not, that's, we're not talking about that specifically. We talk about um, when you talk open in Gmail. For, like, let's suppose there's a specific email in Gmail that you want to use versus if you have all your emails in your inbox, with the uh, with the contacts that are already in infusion for example. Okay, so what each of you as users would need to do is go to the log into your Infusionsoft and go to the um, apps that are available and install Gmail Gmail Sync on your own computers, right? Yeah, we've done that. Now when you have Gmail Sync open in your Gmail, every time you look at an email from an individual, record in Infusionsoft will are in the, I guess, the column, the panel in which uh, the Gmail sync is displaying. Okay, that person doesn't already have a record in Infusionsoft, there will be a button in the panel that says add contact to Infusionsoft. Right, okay. Okay, it's how you bring a contact because they've sent you an email and create a brand new contact record for them. In the little panel interface, you can apply text to them before you say, hit the button that says add to Infusionsoft CRM. You can apply tags that apply. You can create tags in the GL um, sync interface panel. You create a task for that person in the inter in the in the uh, sync interface and uh, and and other things. Um, if you have not already done so, please do go through all the training on using Gmail Sync that's available in the Help Center. It gives you a guide there on everything you can possibly do and how to do it once you've installed and set up your sync. I can't hear you very well. Okay, sorry, this is Vicki. Just to talk for a second, I have a, a customer that emailed me this morning, yes. and he told me to follow up with him late fall. Um, so I just went and added him um, into Infusionsoft manually. I could have just gone right into that email and, and put a task to do that. You could have gone, oh, just had that email open on the left in yes. your email, and then on the right in the email sync panel, been able to just click a button and add that contact to the CRM and even add the task that you need to follow up with him on the date you need to follow up with him right from your email account using the sync panel. Yeah, because it comes up mine. I guess you don't have. She needs a computer. Yeah, okay. I guess just so that shows up. Yeah. Again, just so you know where it is, under hovering under the question mark, we go to the help center. And here, Oh, spell it correctly. That still got me. Thank goodness. So if we go to the main Help Center page, here is training, the overview, because, of course, some people use Gmail, some people use Outlook. Um, but here, manage tasks and appointments using Center Gmail. Add a note, add an opportunity, add contacts into an actual sequence of an active campaign using your Gmail sync. Add a tag. Synchronize your Gmail email and appointments with Infusionsoft. Everything you can do with Think for Gmail, here is the training on every action.
action you can take right from your Gmail using the sync panel. Okay, great. On. <laughs> that precursed some other questions that might happen here. I'm logged in as, as Charles. Um, whenever we have one of these calls, I actually have to log in as one of you administrators so that anything that I do is actually done by one of you. You don't have to give me a user account. Now, I'm going to scooch in a little bit, uh, zoom in. So you guys have, have some uh, things in your favorites. I added a couple things to your favorites for you as well. If you're one way in your Infusionsoft and you need some assistance, no, part of what you guys pay for for your software is 24 cent technical support. If you need help, jump in here, click that link, and in a brand new window, options for speaking to customer support will appear. You can immediately initiate a chat, immediate question, or you could give us a call during normal business hours, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., and get help right now. The one thing that they will always ask for is your app name. And so you have to memorize your app name. If ever your app is LJ323, if anyone ever asks you. Okay. okay. There are goodies that I've put in here. I'm just going to mention them so that you know what the heck it is. Fusionsoft Video Library. If you're trying to figure something out or you're trying to remember how to do something, this link takes you to a page where you have three-minute videos on everything you can do in your software. And How do that's something that we can share with our sales reps for them to go in and have access to this video library? Absolutely. This URL you could send to people in an email. It's a public page. Okay. But you guys, when you log into your software, I've given you a link to it right in the favorites. So everyone who currently is a user, if you go to favorites, all of these things are in your drop down as well. Well, okay. no sucker. Something that you obviously, STEM Beauty, you know your business, you know what you sleep, you know your products, you know what your processes are, but you might not be experts on building campaigns, doing email marketing, optimizing SEO. A public site called the Small Business Learning Site that I've given you the link to. If you ever are wanting some guidance on things that every small business owner should do, there are links here for best practices in automation, email marketing, digital marketing, guidance on how to do SEO, guidance on networking for your sales team, how to do B2B sales, how to work in a CRM, what processes are most effective. This is a, also a knowledge center for small businesses. Technically, whether or not they have Infusionsoft, all of the information here is available, and there are guides not only by Infusionsoft people, but there are Fortune 500 marketing companies that have given us articles, blogs, and books that are free on the site. They cover every topic here that a small business might, might not be an expert in. It's a great resource. Okay. I have blogs in there on best practices, on asking for referrals from your customers. Okay. <laughs> Last little tool, I've given a complete training guide. If you click it, and all of you can be in this document at the same time, it's a shared Google Doc. Page one is basic Infusionsoft information, including your application name and the API key that I think one or team members created for your software. If website is a WordPress site, how to put Infusionsoft web forms on a WordPress site, how to get the plugin. There's an actual plugin supported by WordPress that allows you to just drop public forms right onto your WordPress site. Don't know if you're WordPress, but bent over backwards to integrate well with Infusionsoft. And page after page of the things that I give to customers to teach them how to use their software. Everything that is underlined takes you to the training. Full on contacts training on how to use the Snap app, full training on how to create emails, my goodness, full training on how to set up your e-commerce, refers opportunities, anything that any customer I've ever had that might need, they might need to use those functions in, your, in their software someday in this late training guide is a specific training for anything you might want to do or in the future, okay? And that includes the social media um, integration? 
I, not a lot of people do the social media integrations. You might want to go have a look at uh, the help center for that sort of thing. These are the Infusionsoft side of things, not apps or on or third-party okay. integrations. Okay. One of the tips and tricks I really want to bring to your attention right away if finally you're having issues with deliverability, be, uh, sorry guys, there's this new thing called DMARC that every single ESP email service provider has now implemented back in June. Yeah, I, I took care of that already, Jill. You verify the SPS? Magical. Excellent. Thank you. Again, there's some other wonderful tips and tricks here as well <laughs> if you haven't done them. And uh, I do cover a little bit about Facebook. Uh, how to ensure you've got a good Facebook page as well as best practices in connecting a Facebook pay-per-click ad with Infusionsoft, best ways to target customers using Facebook ads, and also a training overview of how to use the Facebook ad manager, which is where one would create a Facebook ad. Um, lots of great little things in this, in this kickstart guide that you may not have thought of or may not be doing or may need in the future. Okay? Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. You got it. Okay, so I will back up. Any questions with regard to Gmail Sync, or are we good with that? No, I think that's better. Now, you know, once um, you know, we've got the opportunity to go in and bring us to that training process, we can share that with our Fantastic. Once again, if anyone has trouble with Gmail Sync, it is supported by Infusionsoft. So if you have questions, issues, something not working, please contact support. Okay. Answers. Right on? Right. That sounds good. Okay. What are <laughs> Do you have any questions for us, Charles? Yeah, I've been working on a, a, a campaign for uh, automating our office. Um, if you put that by name, I've put them by number. Okay. Well, that's not working. Okay, there we go. I had to click it again. So I got one, two, four. Don't have a three. No problem. Yeah. Uh, Which you want me to jump, jump in? Uh, well, we have the sales pipeline opportunity that. What it does is it essentially goes through the um, the sales pipeline mm -hmm. and makes sure there's tasks and it describes in, in intricate detail to each stage what we need to do. Good. So I mean, if, if for the next step, not for right now, but for later, you might want to just do a quick feedback and give any suggestions or anything that you can give me on. Absolutely. Again, that will use up some of my time. If we end early than 90 minutes today, I can jump back in and use mine to review this. What we'll do is if there's any recommendations that I have to improve it, I don't want to bugger with what you've got. We'll put notes, you these little guys, on the grid of the campaign with my recommendations. Yeah. Do for me, no problem. Any more of that? I just wanted to keep in for the for the time for the next for the not for the next. Understood. Now, should I only look at um, number one, or also look at number two? Um, number one and number two work hand in hand. Very good. I'll do one and two, no problem. Right, and they're supposed to call each other and. I've got one little bug that I'm trying to work through, which I will go through support to see if we get that sort of. Um, that um, I'll tell you if you do contact support and you explain what's going on and they're not able to give you clarity in how to fix it, please send an email, uh, Charles, describing what's going on, and I'll have a look as well. Okay? Um, so just you know, I've, I've taken advantage of using campaigns to create some custom forms. If you take a quick, quick, you did one of those on, on contact, you go out. Okay. 
internal not, form? Not, not in the campaign. Yeah. Uh, uh, the ah. Okay, so it's in an internal form that you're using that's yeah. activated by the add a contact. Your default, your default, so it is the new prospect form that's an internal form filled out by you. Very nice. And it, it starts the automation system. You know, Questions or issues or bugs or anything you wanted to look at in here? Um, yeah, I guess as far as credit card forms, I'm going to go back. Um, okay. Uh, we'll be able to um, have, is, is there a way to have secure information stored in the client record that is necessarily available to everybody? Okay. In years, that are you that the preferences and permissions for every user. Right. It, you can get pretty selective. Um, for example, give one for example that you would want to limit certain things to. Well, we we want to be able to store a, a file in the file area. File box for the contact. For the contact. That's not available to the um, the owner of the contact. Oh, okay. um, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, now, uh, so anyone who, uh, the administrators, yes. So who here is not an administrator? Yeah, you can click on Bridget. Okay. So if you go into the edit permissions, you'll see that with regard to the contact, um, there are lots of yeses and nos as to what they can do. But specifically, there is nothing that says can view file box. We cannot make that a secure area or a part of a contact's record. If I jump into a contact record, just let me show you. I'm just going to grab the very first. Well, all right. These are kind of like if you put something in the file box, anyone will have access to it. What I would recommend if that file is supposed to be secure, the administrators agree to a password on that document. Password that just the administrators know for document before you add that file. So if clicked, it'll prompt whoever's trying to look at it to enter the password that the administrators know, and if they don't know it, it isn't going to open. Okay. Work with that, okay? Yeah. I think what we're going to do is when we set a new customer, we set up a number of forms, and the credit card form is one of Oh, this. Um, goodness. Um, if I look at a person's record, somewhere in here you've got uh, additional info that might include their credit card number. Is that The only way to, that we store someone's credit card number is if they officially make a purchase and their credit card number is entered as a part of that process, that field for their credit card number will automatically truncate after that credit card number is entered. You will only ever be able to see the last four digits of the person's credit card number. The only way to visually see a credit card number once they're in the system is if um, a team were to go to actions and hit export, in the export, the field or column in which the credit card number is in the export CSV file, the entire credit card will be invisible, or will be visible, the entire number. Yeah. Are you, uh, is, is there, uh, in the uh, uh, payment section, so can actually have a credit card Fusion Soft is not FCRA certified. You are not permitted to just create a custom field for a person's credit card and store it in there. That is not permissible practice for our software. And if you were discovered doing that, they'd shut you down. 
The only way a credit card goes into a contest record is if they make a purchase and they give you their credit card number. And as soon as you hit save, it is because of our hard-coded source, it will be truncated to the last four digits. That's what we have to do in order to allow uh, e-commerce to occur in a non-FCRA um, uh, credited software. Claire? I stopped saying Claire. <laughs> It guys, there we go. That's better. <laughs> um, are there any web forms in your campaigns, Charles, that are filled out by the contact? Yes. Uh, if you search and by contact, or no, on, on, in your campaigns, do you have any campaigns that start with an opt-in form? Uh, yes. Which one? Show me. Um, All right. Got something? So, this is on a website somewhere or is being promoted on, on social media? You can go to purestemdb.com. Uh, have you added that? No. Link to your own website and your favorites? Come on now. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Um, all right. URL again, please. Purestemdb.com. That's appropriate. Yep. Uh, um, That's your f default front page. Okay. Default page if you're from the U.S. Because in the U.S., that's what I get to see. <laughs> All right. And then I can click on home and get to the page. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, that's where it comes to, um, you know, do that for anyone in the U.S., I guess that's wanting to look at that. Well, that's an interesting thing to see, eh? If I go there, it says, hey, site restricted. Now I can't do diddly. If I wanted to work out. Okay. okay. We don't have to of our borders. So. Understood. Yeah. But U.S. users, I suppose I could log in if I, was, if I had an account or something like that. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Refresh. Yeah, just let us know. He's just um, so he's doing that. Um, yes. You know, because we're just in the very beginning stages now of getting the sales team um, familiar with and getting them to use programs to for all of you know their abilities as well. Yes. Um, so we'll have to see with the time remaining that we have with you if it might even be beneficial to try to have. Other people um, be able to ask a few questions as well. We'll see a little bit of a, um, you know, just for 30 minutes for them to be able to log in and chat with you. Yeah. If you use the three hours of the expert Kickstarter, it's up to you, but please know um, if you decide after that's done that, you know what, next month we want another two hours of Jill's time or a consultant's time to do a day or have things reviewed, we for ongoing services and you can get. Uh, you know, two hours for like, 300 and some dollars and continue to get some assistance um, from one of our experts or myself. Okay. The three hours just came with the purchase of your of your new application okay. with me. Yep. Let's, there we go. Right. I have a very quick question. Yeah. Can you... Uh, Different languages like on, on what I'm looking at right now, no, I do not see a button that would allow me to translate your site to French. If FusionSoft currently is an English only application, I have many uh, French Canadians who build campaigns in both English and French. For their website, they own the English campaign, translate, and use ASCII keys 
for accented characters, and they can publish the same web form in French on their French version of their site. Yes, uh, I am Canadian. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 don't yay yet. This Friday, I have my swearing in ceremony, and I'm becoming an American on Friday. <laughs> I started as a German. <laughs> yeah, my brother lives, lives here too. He's I only went to university at uh, the University of Western Ontario in London, Ontario, while my friend Germany. That's great. My sister went there too. Oh, awesome university. I loved living in London. And then I worked in Toronto for a number of years. And Drake International in Toronto uh, moved me to the United States, gave me a quarter million dollars, and had me start a company for them that I ran for seven years. That's how I came to the U.S. Wow, good for you. Thanks. I have 30 years in sales and marketing uh, before I came to Infusionsoft. Now, I am an old lady. <laughs> and uh, I also have uh, a pretty nasty little disease that started in 2012 and was told I had to stop being a monster in sales and marketing, stop traveling, and stop being responsible for 100 people's mortgages getting paid and find a nice, normal 9-to-5 job that I enjoy. And uh, luckily, Infusionsoft, after their first email to me that said I was way overqualified, I spoke to the hiring manager and they went, all right, we'll interview you, and they hired me the next day. I love what I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, back at back at this. So um, again, Infusionsoft itself is in, is always going to be in English. I'm sure in the next five to ten years, we will offer the platform itself. Other main languages like Spanish, German, and uh, and French. But until then, everything you build essentially will be in English. Although you can close campaigns and Again, using the ASCII keys for accents, you can make French forms and uh, allow people to uh, to use French forms and French emails. Okay. Okay. All right. On the website. So um, here there are some web forms. Where would I find a web form uh, that's an Infusionsoft form? Well, um, that's on the green bar, wholesale inquiry. So if I wholesale inquiries, that's that campaign on the bottom. And here, <clears throat> here's our embedded form. Email the brand information. Oh, we have an issue. There are a Canadian company registered and licensed in Canada, correct? Yes. Um, you do here, when someone fills out that form, you do some internal actions, right? Do the mandatory Canadian Spam Act email confirmation request. Thank you for that. And only if they click the link in that one email that they're sent, do you uh, allow them to move on in this campaign and get the brand info that they've asked for. Right? Yeah. Yep. Now, here is a best practice. Make this campaign and publish it again. Yes, you may. Right. I take that. Information. Right click, duplicate. Set it below. If they don't click the link in the first email, on that email confirmation a second time, if they do click the link there, I will send them back up where they should be. Now, again, I'll refine this so it doesn't look horrible with arrows. But what to do is actually give them two opportunities to opt in. That way, fewer people will get stopped here because they ever they don't have time or they forget to click the click here. Let's send it to them again. So if I go in here, we're waiting two days. If they haven't clicked the link in that email in two days, they will be moved down here, where we will send the confirmation email again. And then this email will say, "Remember to my spelling atrocious. <laughs> remember to confirm your email." I am going to, because it's the second time we're trying this, I'm going to add the magical ellipsis. Do you guys know about the magical ellipsis, the three dots? No. Okay. And it's in a subject line. In email, well, you're trying to get someone to take the same action, 
one. If you send ellipsis to the second email, it'll have a higher, a 10 to 15 percent higher open rate. Well, this is a psychological punctuation that really causes people to open the dang email. It's an amazing thing. All right. So. I'm sorry. How do you prevent emails from Pearson going to spam? Well, nothing goes to spam. I know that Charles, you set the SPF record. So emails that are going to people's inboxes and using Outlook, Gmail, um, MSN, uh, Yahoo, all majors. Because you set your SPF record, when this email comes is coming into a person's account, for example, pings the Gem Beauty website and looks for that SPS verification, it finds it because you've told me you've done it and never put your email into a promo folder or spam or junk. That's great. Right thing. That's why I was so delighted that you already verified the SPF. That's what it's for. The, again, they'll just get this second email only if they didn't click the click here in the first email. Uh, again, um, and so I'm going to make a minor edit right here. A few days ago, you asked. To Before we start sending it, you got to click here to make sure we have your permission. That's all you need to do with this email. I move it from draft to ready. I care. I'm going to have the two day wait. Really to do anything. <clears throat> if I get this locked properly, there you go. That looks better. We'll fill out that form. Your processes will occur. They'll send email number one asking them to double opt in. If they don't, two days later, Remember that they need to double opt in and they'll get the, the the information that they requested. This stops people from sitting here and never moving forward in your campaign. Okay. Right. Finish. Of course, the check marks will be green because we're amazing and it's perfect. Day, anyone who fills out that form, they'll get email number one at the double opt in. And then if they don't click the link, they'll get a reminder email saying, we're not going to send you brand info unless you click here. Okay, it'll function better now, and you'll have a far fewer people who get to this point of the campaign and never move on. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Anytime you have a web form in the future on any website, do a double opt-in just like this. Okay. Okay. Any other, uh Questions or issues with your campaigns, Charles? Because that's kind of where we're sitting right now. Uh, the only other thing is, uh, because the contract we sign with some of our clients, uh, we won't always have them double pop. We find the contract is really to receive nation from us. So that's a problem in the fact that. We may have some contact lag that's double opted in and some not lag that's double opted in. So what I would do with that is I would clone campaign that has the double opt-in that anyone can use the web form and make one that is specifically for contract uh, people who have this tag that indicates they've got a signed contract. Just clone the campaign and start that campaign with the different tag. So that makes are you, do you mean, so for some of our existing customers that we want this to be a seamless transition for, um, I mean, just because we're now, you know, using something in terms of that they've already receiving information from us, but now do we have to start another opt-in um, option for them? Well, again, I'll only show you with the example in front of me. We can, I'll, I'll do this because I don't want this to be, it, to impact anything. Um, but we have, um, let me see, I have I a have, goal. I actually have such things. Oh, okay, great, hold on. What you look at? Uh, I have to, go to uh, there's a little opt-in there. Yeah. Yeah. 
185. Thank you. Yeah. And that's one. Then you give people a tag not doubled opt in, and then a, a tag will go to the rep to get them to double opt in. How is the rep getting them to double opt in? Do you call them and get their verbal permission? Yeah, you call them, get their verbal permission, or actually there's a form that I created. Okay, there's that. <laughs> on the contact record, the form? It would be. Where would it be? Uh, I created a form. So if you go to contact, just go to any contact. I'll, see if it's, it's right. I'll go to one we've are, um, I'll, actually, I'll go to Charles B. I'll just grab a recent place we were. It's a go company. To, go down to uh, uh, forms. Okay. I think I set up an internal form to do this. All right. Client flag is delayed. Status update. Maybe that's the double opt in. I deleted it. Oh! <laughs> I deleted it because um, we, that we didn't want to force them to do the dump. Here's, the, here's the, the, the thing. Um, you do not need people to double opt in that have verbally agreed to have you send things to them, or if they're a customer, you do not have to have them double opt in for things. So don't make it too difficult for yourself. The double opt-in is required when contact fills out a landing page or a form that you've got out somewhere on the internet. That's when you must have a double opt-in and that's it. That, that's the, I know the Canadian Spam Act inside and out and that's the rule. Public web form, public landing page must have a double opt-in for a Canadian big company, period. Nothing else that you do with customers in a campaign or, or, or sending them, uh, you know, they call you and they say, I want a quote. Look, you do not have to get them to opt in and send them their quote. You have verbal permission, period. Yeah, a question that came up before was for some of our customers. They've been our customers for you already. Is that we don't, they're already receiving information from us that we don't need to say to them, oh, now we need nope. to double opt in. No, you do not. And not, um, oh gosh, I, don't, I want to say past progressive, but it's not, um, it doesn't go back in time. You don't have to go back to all of the people that are already customers working with you, already a wholesaler, and have them do, uh, uh, to uh, opt in for your communications via email. Absolutely not. That killed so many businesses. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you asked to clarify, but you're doing everything you're supposed to. You're good. Well, just a, uh, we have a, our online website for you know, Okay. As soon as they purchase once from us, there we don't have that. We can send it to Once a person made a purchase, you are absolutely permitted to communicate with them about that purchase and upsell other things using email marketing. Absolutely. It's why you have the unsubscribe in all of your emails. Because if they go, look, I just wanted that. I don't want to get uh, an email saying that's asking me why I thought of that product, how it's been working with me, and provides with feedback. But you're allowed to send those emails asking for a survey um, because they are a customer. You just have to be, they didn't opt in for your newsletter, so you can't send them your newsletter if they buy a product. Right. That's a thing. But they're stopping you from sending them an email saying, we're hoping you're enjoying your blank, blank, blank product. Did you know we have a newsletter? Did you know we have a blog? Click here if you'd like to subscribe. There's nothing stopping you from asking them that. Okay. And they subscribe that that, that uh, web form should double opt in. in. That form, because it's a public web form, it should have the double opt in. Not a problem. Got it. Exercise. Uh, the I think really for us, although 
for being able to utilize all of the training um, tools that you brought to our attention is definitely key on the list of uh, what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and again, if, if you want to, you know, you've built your pipeline out and everything like that, but again, if you want to make sure you did it right, um, in her, let me find her. Specific training on how to set up a successful pipeline. Right there, clickable link in a new window, and there's a wonderful video on how to set up a awesome. Um, and your name. Yeah. Look at this goodie. Your sales team who will be using opportunities and your pipeline, this is the training you want them to do to learn how to use what you've set up. Okay. Training for your sales team. <laughs> Sorry, tackle. <laughs> I, when I precurse something that you're doing, and I've never spoken to you before, but again, every team member should go through that training and they'll, they'll know all of the basics. Yeah. Rock and roll. Um, so, just a question then, Jeff. Yes. Um, if you take a look at uh, our uh, opportunity, our sales pipeline stages. All right. I'm hesitant to do that because I am a perfectionist. So, I'm going to my tongue, I promise. Ah. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Hold on. It's okay. All right. First, I'm going to look at your pipeline. Oh. Um. The order 10, 20, 40, 50, 90, 90. Um, and these are the same thing. So everyone goes in. Go ahead. Other pipeline stuff that I was testing out. I just okay. I, I say that they're the same thing because they are the same order that I look at to see how a person, if they move in a straight line, although they don't have to, through your pipeline, they they technically should start here and then move down here. As they move down, the probability of your making money on that opportunity goes up. Um, one probability is actually off. It should be 100%. Right. We're at that uh, all right. So the one step actually should have a probability of 100% so that when you run your reports, it accurately 100% of each one that's in the one opportunity stage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on. Get that. There we are. Up the top. Probability. Fix your reports once you start using that. If, if a salesperson moves the opportunity to one, 100% of what forecasted the value of this opportunity to be will now show up in the reports instead of zero. The last delete. Yeah, you want me? Yeah. I have your permission. It's on video. <laughs> All right. So that, is our, that is our pipeline. All right, so one day they're in the new opportunity stage. Maximum number of days, three, three, seven, three. And this would be a one as well. Uh, we can then fine tuning what our team is going to do for those days. All right. When is in the new opportunity stage, stage one, the thing that you expect the person to do are here. No, because I just send a task out to them, so it shows up on their phone. Um, however, in your pipeline, yeah. um, if you say that a person, whenever they're assigned a new opportunity, they should do A, B, C, and D, you really should have them in here and indicate whether A is a required thing for them to do or not. Well, I have that. That stops people from moving a opportunity to the, to the next stage if they haven't done all of your tasks that are in here. Well, that's when we look at my campaign, you'll see, because people are often more on their phone, maybe you don't really show up too well on the home-based app. Oh. It's just part of the logic that what your stage one is as defined 
as and the steps that have to be taken by the salesperson during when someone is in that stage, they should be identified here so that in your campaign that's a mandatory or a um a optional task that they have to complete during that stage. This checklist is the only thing that prevents a salesperson from moving a person to far farther down the stages and completed the required task. Some, some people use them, some people don't. Well, I've been using them because I'm actually sending tasks out to the reps when the different stages occur in terms of exactly what I want them to do. It's a lot of detail in the task description, right? right? So is that not more labor intensive rather than, is this not automated? Test opportunity already yeah. created for someone? Yeah, I did that. What message actually going for? If you go to contact. Well, pull up opportunities by going to opportunities and see yeah. you're the owner of all of these, and these are some tests. Okay. Yeah. So I go into the opportunity test, C test company. Stage is an opportunity. You've, you, Based on the number of days that a person should be in this stage, they should be moved by the 18th. Yeah. Your salesperson put in notes about the follow-up action, but here there is no visible representation of what needs to be done next because you didn't define it in the checklist for opportunities. If you actually look against uh, that contact record. Okay. So, to the contact rather, record rather than the opportunity, if I go to C-Test, yeah. task, the task is by the campaign and it says, update opportunity for C, this group, hold on, on home button, my day, and update the opportunity to engaging stage. Yeah, works well. well um, and it'll work just fine. I do, again, I, I'm just making a recommendation that you back up the tasks that are in your campaign by adding them to the checklist for that stage. Okay. Just a right. Um, some, people, some people don't. I prefer to do it, so I'll shut up now. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm trying to. Well, but. The thing is, is that if if, if a network this if opportunity comes in, then I mean, doesn't prevent like you from having to manage what is going to get into that. No, because that, there's a task that they'll have next. In the yep. In campaign, there's always a task that occurs after they close the preceding task that they're assigned to do. That's how he's got it automated in the campaign. The only benefit, if you will, having your checklist of tasks that have to be done in the opportunity record stages is that if the person actually looks at the opportunity itself, one, any one of your administrators, you'd be able to look at the opportunity record and run a report on opportunity records and know who's actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and that's what we do want to be able to monitor. Mm. The more data that you have in the actual setup area here, in these, that will make your reporting on how each salesperson is performing better. If our target number for engage is three, and there are two checklist activities, you'll be able to run a report and see how many are getting stuck in engage and for how long so that you can contact the sales rep and say, you're seeming to have some problems with these tasks. How can we improve your performance with these two tasks? Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of what I want to arrange demo trial. Under okay. I have Woohoo! Now, it's none of these are required. But as they complete these tasks, it will show as completed or needing to be completed on the opportunity record. So thank you for doing that. 
I feel now. <laughs> See, there is a rhyme or reason to, to... Under, I don't know what your process is. You're the only one who can translate it from a great big whiteboard or a piece of paper into the Infusionsoft automated workflow. Um, you know, but at best practice, checklists, excellent. <laughs> and there are other checklists. They will be added in at the, the different stages as well for people to do as well. Fantastic. If you uh, go to opportunity default. Yep. I believe. My okay, perfect. It gives the salesperson the option when, bummer, the opportunity is lost to indicate uh, main reason. Because you've edited this, this will be very helpful, again, for reporting. You'll be able to run reports on your loss to see your your, state, your opportunities that resulted in being uh, final stage lost and see which the most uh, prominent reason is and modify, perhaps low price, uh, perhaps looking at what your competitor is doing and beating you at, perhaps improving your prospecting so that you have less uh, op op opportunities that default because the client wasn't qualified. The more you have here, the better, in all honesty. Do you have uh, just uh, a best practice of what you could suggest in there that you could send to us? Um, it, again, everybody's workflow uh, for their, their sales pipelines and opportunities is unique to their business. Pull out of the air, not at all. The number five. There are always more than just three reasons that someone didn't go with, with you. E uh, lost is you need to have that the client uh, stopped communicating. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, so we're going to go prospect. Responding. It happens. Salespeople, all options. That's what will allow you to improve your workflow. And to know, absolutely set it to yes. You to know why it was lost. So, uh, if they don't have to put a reason in there, they say, I got no work today because everyone I have been more, uh, all of my opportunities, they're at either one or lost. So uh, I'm taking the day off. Force them to put a reason in there. Make that a mandatory step if they move someone to lost. You need it for your reporting if they ask why. Yes, for the win reason as well? Uh, no, because, I, well, I, I don't know that your people will ask. If you get a confirmation from a prospect and they are going to go with you and you move them to one, does the sale rep, sales rep have a, you know, a con thing saying, a station saying, oh, excellent, we're delighted that you've decided to go with us, we're really looking forward to moving forward with you, et cetera. Do they say, can I ask you what was the decision maker for you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey. Um, so usually that's left off, although it is a, a wonderful part of what a salesperson should do. Find out why people uh, decide to go with you. In actuality, Charles, you should campaign for new customers um, that sends an email to them about three months after their purchase. You get a clickable link for a survey where they can tell you what they thought about your services, your products, and working with you. That gives you who happy customers are that you should then put into a refer a friend campaign and a campaign where you ask for testimonials that you can put up on your website. Yeah. That, that's in the works. That's, that's Standing. Doing it. If those in the works, doing it right. Anything else with regard to your opportunities and pipeline that you want to have a look at? For just as a reminder, you can go into the the, the checklist and put the, the steps I'm sending you to them in the past because mostly they're going to be working with their phones and the tasks will show up on their phone versus the opportunities do not. Yep. Is there a difference for opportunities to show up on uh, the, the one app? 
Um, I can't say what that is right off the top um, of my mind. I think that that. So I can't I can't make any guarantees, but it should be in there before the end of the year for mobile. I list in our last company meeting, they were uh, the product team was going over what will be in the next release, and then a short overview of what will be in the release after that. And I know I remember seeing opportunities in mobile apps. So on its way. As okay. soon as that is introduced and available, whoever the primary contact for this application LJ three two three is, I think it's you, Charles. You'll get an email from Infusionsoft with the yeah. software updates, and in there, it'll link, give training on the new things you can do in, in in mobile. You can just grab that link and share it with everybody else on the team. Um, I'll give you a heads up on something else. When you go in, go into Campaign Builder, and know there is the toolbox with yeah. these tools, and then if you go into a sequence, you get a different set of tools. In this release, the toolbox is going away, and we're putting a dynamic panel of every tool, everything that's in the toolbox on the left. Um, we're adding a couple of different goals, but the, it'll, instead it'll be a single dynamic toolbox that has all goals, all sequences, and then all of the things you can do, um, tasks, and add an appointment, and that will be in its own area of the dynamic um, sub panel, if you will. Okay, I'm just trying to make it less clicks for people, as easy as possible. <laughs> Um, I know we had you for 90 minutes today, but I don't know if we can style the next 30 minutes into still yes. a few hours. Absolutely. We can stockpile the last half hour of this session. And actually, um, if I'm going to review those two campaigns, it uh, probably take me 30 minutes itself. Okay. Um, we'll use half hour of today for me to have a look at these two campaigns. And like I say, once I've done that, Charles, you'll see my notes on the grid of the campaign. I'm not going to change a thing. If I look at things, keep in mind, even if I look at um, what's inside a sequence, you know how everything changes color and acts as if it's been edited. You know that, right? So after I've reviewed and put my notes in here, I will absolutely hit publish again, but no worries. If I don't hit publish, when I go here and I look at this, oh, that's interesting, and I go back out and I back out, sometimes this object will change to green with gray stripes as if I edited it. Edited it. If I don't publish, however it's currently published, that is the latest iteration, nothing that I do will be set in stone until I hit publish. So please don't worry if I have to publish and your publish date changes. I promise I'm not going to edit anything. I'm just going to put comments here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys want to actually look at a calendar and, and schedule another 90-minute session with me later this month or end of the month? Um. We're actually just trying to confirm a, a call with our rep, like yep. everyone uh, together. So, which thinking for the, the so just getting approval from everyone the 30th, yep. I guess. So maybe the 31st. Oh, or I have a but can we can we just get right back to you on that once we have confirmation? Should I just send um well I'll again just so I don't have to put everybody's email in there. I'll send you Paula and Charles the link to my calendar. Okay. And I'll give you the ninety minute link. So okay. you'll see anywhere that I do in my calendar have a ninety minute spot, you'll be able to grab it. Okay. All right. So I'll send you guys my ninety minute scheduling link. All right. Excellent. Great. All right. Well, How are you feeling all right today? Yeah. Just one more quick question. One more quick spot, Jill. Got it. The practice is that you suggested of putting the checklist on the, uh, the pipeline right in the pipeline stage. Yep. I will put the stuff that I'm asking you to do in the past as a, as a summary reminder that to, to do those. 
Yep, that'll work just fine. If you look at the opportunity itself, you want the verbiage on the opportunity view, so the checklists and things that they need to do or yeah. will need to do in the campaign. We just yeah. want them to be synchronized. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, guys. Uh, any any last thing? I'm not going to hang up until I've covered everything. <laughs> no. no, that was uh, very helpful. Thank you so much. All right, my pleasure. Um, I will send you, actually, just for convenience, I'll send Paula and Charles the we transfer email with a clickable to download the video. You can forward that to the rest of the team who might want to download the video. <gasps> Only those who have used WebEx on their computer will be able to run the video because the player comes with WebEx. Okay. If you go to run the video and you can't, please go to the WebEx site and do a search for WebEx player and install it on your computer and you'll be good to go. Okay. Okay. Last thing, I'll send an email to uh, Paul and Charles with a link to my 90-minute scheduler, and you guys can have a look at my calendar and pick a spot that works for you, and we'll go with that. Okay. And I'll send you an email, Charles, after I've had looked at the um, campaign one and campaign two. It may not be today, but it certainly will be in the next week. <laughs> All right. I'll keep working on uh, adding some of those things to today. Uh, I had one bug I was trying to work through. I'll hopefully get that complete today, and then the campaign will actually be ready to test and, and yeah. thor thoroughly test on your cells. Put your cells in it and yeah. move your cells through your opportunity pipeline to make sure you've covered every task that should be done and haven't missed anything. Yeah, right on. What I did. Okay. Thanks so much, you guys. Looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Okay, take care. You too. Have a good day, eh? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.